So I'd like to talk about addition of sinusoids that are all of the same frequency. And one of the things when we talk about sinusoids of the same sinusoid drive, we'll be talking about a function of t. And we know that that's going to have an amplitude of phase and a frequency. And I can represent that as it being the real part of a complex structure. And you might think, well, that sounds like a very, very like a, you know, complicated thing, except to realize a very interesting thing. That if I take the real part of a whole sum of things, it's equal to the real part of the pieces. So this allows me to do something very interesting, which is then to say, you know, I know that the frequency is the same, so I'll be able to pull that out of the whole summation and then just look at amplitude and summation of phase. And you think, oh, that's going to be very, very cool because then I can just deal with that part and then pull everything together and invert it. So that's actually what you see. So take a simple example of saying I want to, multi I want to add 4 cosine plus 3 sine of the same frequency. Now they're omega 1, where omega is going to be related to frequency. It's 2 pi f. And you think, all right, so in the one case, it's cosine, and it's 4, and an e of j, j times 0. And the second one is sine, is e is going to be 3 times e to the minus j pi over 2. And remember, sine is a minus pi over 2 phase shift. And you think, okay. Which, of course, remember, that's really 3 cosine of the minus pi over 2. And you're like, all right, great, that works. So then I just have to sort of take those pieces, and, not, and the frequency part sort of gather together, because it's the same. And what happens is when I do this, I get a magnitude of 5. Why? Because it's the square of the first and the square of the second. Those are the magnitudes. That's 3 squared plus 4 squared is 5 squared. It's sort of classic identity. And then the phase, I can do that by, look, by looking at the two values and sort of taking, um, sort of looking at the negative of that. And then also still accounting for the phase or aspect of this. Yay. Uh, and so as a result, I ended up getting 5 omega 1t minus, uh, minus a particular quantity, which is sort of a phase in between the two, which is kind of what you'd expect. That's cool. So let's have some other fun with some interesting ones. You can imagine taking one where you say, well, what is 5 cosine omega 1 plus pi over 3 and minus pi over 3? Ah, well, again, here I can now bring in, well, the same frequency, but notice I got 5 e to the j minus pi 3 and e to the minus pi. Well, that turns out to give you something like cosine, right? It's plus and minus of the same number. So it's the equivalent of 10 times cosine of pi over 3. Well, cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So 10 times a half is 5. You're like, huh, I got 5. That's kind of cool. Do a similar thing with, say, now cosine omega 1 pi, pi over 6 minus pi over 6. And what do I get here? Well, now I get something, if I look at the two of them, it looks like it's, I get something that almost looks like a sign that comes out of that. So I get 4 times j sine, because remember it's 2j for the sine, sine pi over 6, and it gives me 2j. And so you're like, huh, that's kind of cool. And so, but it's 2j, and it's a positive phase shift at that point, so then it gives me 2 cosine times uh, pi over 2. And so this kind of a, you know, so basically it's a lagging kind of phase shift by pi over 2. So it's really very powerful identity and a powerful approach that really gives you, allows you to kind of do some of this math of different sinusoids very directly.